I'm Beth Graves, and thank you for joining us on the Circus Arts Spotlight. Each week, we'll shine the spotlight on the people, programs, and events of the Circus Arts Conservatory. In addition to professional and student youth performances, you'll explore incredible outreach programs and learn how the circus arts impact so many aspects of life. For more information on today's topic or anything circus arts related, please go to our website, circusarts.org. That's circusarts.org. Let's get started. Hi. Today's spotlight is shined on Erin Watkins. Before joining the Circus Arts Conservatory to manage the Circus Arts and Healthcare program, Erin was the Dean of Students at Ringling's famed Clown College, and he served as the resident clown doctor at the Hole in the Wall gang camp. Join us as we shine the spotlight on this thoughtful and interesting funny man. Hi, Erin. Hi, Beth. So I was wondering if you could tell us about your background. Sure. What would you like to know? I want to know uh, the whole history the of whole your life. History. <laughs> well, I, I got into clowning quite by accident. Um, it was 1981, and I was attending Ohio University, and in the spring quarter, I looked at my transcript and saw that I could graduate a whole year early if I went to summer school. So I had very mixed feelings. Uh, you know, <laughs> summer school was my last free summer. I didn't want it to be a difficult summer. So I went through the summer school catalog. Uh, the A's, there was nothing. The B's, there was nothing. The C's, oh, I came to calculus. I could take calculus. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, oh, chemistry. There's another easy class <laughs> I could take. But then I came to clowning. Uh, there was a teacher from New York University who was going to be a guest artist at uh, Ohio University for the summer named John Towson. And he, he wrote the definitive history of clowns. And uh, he was offering several courses, which I signed up for. And uh, the Friday night before the classes were to begin, uh, I got a call about 11 o'clock in the evening, and I was on my way out um, to the library. I'm pretty sure that's where <laughs> I was <laughs> going. Yeah. Uh, but the voice at the other end said, oh, I heard you're a clown. And I thought it was a friend of mine playing a prank. And he said, um, uh, you know, I, I got a sidewalk sale coming up. You know, I'm really serious. I need a clown. And I thought, oh, cool. I'll, I'll be learning all this clown kind of stuff. And uh, he offered me $25. And uh, a free haircut for the rest of the time I was in town. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, I, I said, oh, okay, when, when would you like me there? He was having a sidewalk sale. And, uh, you know, the, the restaurants could bring a table out and the, right. the clothiers. But uh, obviously he couldn't bring the barber chairs out. So he wanted a couple clowns to, uh, um, to come and wave people into his shop. So okay. we were just about to hang up. And I said, oh, okay, by the way, when do you need me? And he said, well, tomorrow morning around 9 o'clock. Oh, I had no idea what I would do, but um, I, I am very, uh, I'm both embarrassed and proud to have a picture here for all your listeners to see <laughs> of the very first time that I clowned. Um, and uh, <laughs> folks, you would think it was really funny if you could actually see it. Um, but so I did it and, and instantly fell in love with the art of clowning. Uh, it was unlike anything that I'd ever done before. Yeah. Uh, I was in theater school at the time, and, um, you know, usually people in general, uh, in the United States anyway, will, will look down on clowns. They'll say, oh, you know, yeah, fun clown, go entertain the kids. Right. Um, but it, clowning is actually a real legitimate type of theatrical acting. Um, it's existed for centuries and centuries. Um, if, uh, if you look at the Italian Renaissance and the Commedia dell'arte, uh, those groups were all actually clowns. Um, and so the one major difference that I found between clowning and acting was the fourth wall. Uh, the fourth wall is an invisible partition between the actor and the audience. Okay. And in a normal play, you know, you're acting with your fellow actors and pretty much ignoring the audience. Uh, but with clowning, that wall is just kicked down and you're out in the audience. It's a totally interactive experience that, that really doesn't exist without an audience. Right. Um, and, and I thought that that's really, it, it adds an extra dimension. It's, it's an extra chance to actually connect uh, with your audience. Wow. And I've spoken with um, some other clowns and they were explaining to me that when a lot of times when they're doing the interactions before a show, they're actually sort of screening 
the audience to see who they might want to pull up on stage? There's a lot of psychology involved in that. Sure. Um, you want somebody who's really enthusiastic um, because the show can fall flat in, in a second. Right. Um, but you don't want to get somebody who's going to uh, be a heckler or, um, you know, be too involved in, in the show. Right. Uh, you want somebody who you know will be cooperative and, and have fun. That's if, if your volunteer is having fun, your audience will have fun because the volunteer is actually an extension, a representative of the audience. Right. I thought that was really interesting when I learned that. So um, you now manage the uh, Circus Arts and Healthcare program for the Circus Arts Conservatory. But before you were here, you were involved with several pioneering healthcare humor projects. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those? Sure. Um, when, uh, when I graduated from Ohio U, I moved to New York seeking fame and fortune <laughs> as an actor, really. But uh, as soon as I got there, I found out that actors were a dime a dozen. Clowns, however, were about 12 cents a dozen. So uh, it was really, it was great because I could make a living uh, between my acting jobs clowning. Uh, whereas, you know, my friends were waiters, waitresses, proofreaders, typesetters, um, but I could make my entire living performing. So um, I had been in New York uh, for several years and I uh, hooked up uh, with the Big Apple Circus. Um, they had a program called the Clown Care Unit uh, which was really a, a pioneering program that took clowns into hospitals um, and and did humor therapy. We, we always said we were not thera therapists, but what we did is very therapeutic. Okay. And we would dress up as doctors and nurses and do phony operations on kids. And we were there <laughs> for um, uh, for the, we were there for the the kids. We worked pediatrics units, um, so we were there for the patients. We were also there, very importantly, for the caregivers, um, because in the hospitals today, you, you have people with chronic illnesses, uh, cancer, sickle cell anemia. It, it's not, you don't really go into the hospital anymore for, for a day at a time because you've got a broken bone. Right. Uh, it's their extended stays. And so the caregivers um, really need a little respite. Uh, we also, and the same goes true for the staff. We would entertain the staff as well. Okay. So, um, so how long were you uh, with doing that in New York? Um, I worked with the clown care unit for four years. Uh, I wrote the training manual for the new clowns. When, when I first started, um, it was a very small program in, uh, I think, just two or three hospitals. Uh, but uh, by the time uh, the, uh, the program expanded, um, they were in cities all around the country and, and several right. cities around the world. Uh, one of our, our biggest advocates was Paul Newman. Okay. And uh, Paul Newman, uh, he would go on rounds with us disguised. Wow. Um, he was a wonderful man. He, he, he was all heart. Um, and he actually started up a camp called the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp. Uh, and it was at a remote location out in Connecticut. That was after the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids. Exactly, yep. Okay. Um, and uh, it was all uh, designed like a Western village. Um, you know, there was, there was a canteen and there were cabins everywhere. Uh, and, and his idea was um, to give kids who could not experience summer camp because of their illness, whether they needed transfusions daily or um, you know whether their their bones were really fragile so they right. could, couldn't get up. He wanted those kids to have the same experience that every other kid at a summer camp could have. Okay. So there was a hospital that was disguised. Um, <laughs> you know, this was just another log cabin, uh, and so kids would come for a week or two weeks at a time, uh, and all their medical needs could be met. But you know, during the day they were out at the fishing hole. Uh, they were doing crafts. They were doing archery. They were doing uh, fun things. That, that it, it was it was a really fantastic program, and um, I was the resident clown. So what we would do, we would we would just go all over the camp uh, and create all kinds of havoc. Okay. Um, we, we used to make uh, movies once a session, and, and uh, Mr. Newman was involved a lot, and uh, we would dress everybody up as cowboys, and w w the kids would actually write skits and we would film them wow. and then we would show them at the final show uh, of the week as, as part of the, the talent show and the closing ceremonies yeah um so th those were those two programs are how i really got involved with clowning and healthcare. right and didn't you win some 
uh, award for what you did there? Um, yes. Uh, uh, with the Clown Care Unit, uh, we were awarded the Raoul Wallenberg Humanitarian Award for the work that we that we did in the hospitals. That's really wonderful. Um, and yeah, it was a it was a big honor. Yeah. So you were in. So was the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp? Was that also in New York? No, it was in Connecticut. Oh, okay. I think you said that. Sorry. Um, so you've been all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then you wound up in Sarasota. Yes, I, I came back to Sarasota. Um, I was on Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, and I came back to Sarasota to serve as the dean of students at the Clown College uh, in its final years. Yeah. Um, that's how I got back here. Um, and uh, sadly, Clown College College closed. I know, so sad. Yep, it was a uh, it was a victim of uh, its own success. Actually, <laughs> uh, Clown College was started in 1968 because when a man named Irvin Feld bought the circus uh, from the Ringling family, um, he took a look at his clowns and realized that they were aging pretty quickly. The, right. the, the average age, I think, was 58 years old. Okay. Um, and so uh, he needed to, to beef up the, the Clown Alley, which is the, the group, what the group, group of clowns is called. So he started Clown College, and that was offered, uh, it was totally free. Right. Um, and there, in those days, there weren't a lot of amateur clowns. Um, but because of Clown College, people who, who went to Clown College would go out and they would teach other people and they would teach other people. Right. And so now there are two major organizations, uh, clown groups uh, in, in the United States, uh, and they have 10,000 people and more among their members. Wow. So what happened was um, because of that, more people knew how to clown and could audition for the circus. And also just technologically speaking, you know, in, in the old days, uh, the producers would actually have to go out and watch shows. But, you know, with technology advancing, uh, all the clowns would put their show on, you know, first on videotapes, then on DVDs, right. and now just on a website. Uh, so they really didn't need the clown college anymore. Okay. So that, that closed, unfortunately, and then you stayed in um, Sarasota. I stayed in Sarasota because my wife uh, was also working for the circus at the time, oh. and we were just starting a family. Um, and, uh, you know, we realized the only way for me to really make a living uh, as a clown mm -hmm. would be to go out and travel around. So it wasn't very conducive to, to having a family. So you start, you, you did some work uh, for the Circus Arts Conservatory, um, for Circus Sarasota, before it was a Circus Arts be Conservatory. Before it was even Circus Sarasota. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, the uh, uh, Pedro Reyes and I met through a mutual friend, Henry Barragon, who is uh, one of our vice presidents here at the Circus Arts Conservatory. Uh, Henry and I knew each other from Ringling Days, and um, he introduced me to this guy, Pedro. Yeah. And uh, Pedro had this wild idea of starting up a circus and a circus school in Sarasota, which is the circus capital of the world. Right. Uh, but at the time when, when Pedro had the idea, there wasn't a whole lot happening here anymore. There was a place called Circus World, uh, which was a like sort of a fun, not a museum exactly, but it was it was a, a place where you could go and, and watch circus things. Railing Brothers had their winter quarters here. Uh, but all of that was gone. The only thing that was really left was the Ringling Circus Museum. And at the time, it was not very large. You know, it wasn't the large museum that it is today. Right. So Pedro and Dolly Jacobs, his wife, uh, came back to Sarasota after they um, not retired from performing, but retired from touring extensively. Um, and he wanted to start a circus and a circus school. So I knew a little bit about marketing, and I, I helped out with marketing um, in the first days of the circus, right. and have been uh, ever since then. I've uh, worked with the Circus Arts Conservatory on a part-time basis as a marketing consultant, as a performer, walking stilts, clowning, things like that. Wow! So you have a very long history with our program. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but now you are the manager of the Circus Arts and Healthcare program, and so I'd like if you could tell us about that. That would be great. Yeah, the uh, Circus Arts and Healthcare is a really exciting outreach program. Um, Pedro and Dolly were were very conscious that they wanted to not only just have a school and a circus, you know, pe where people would come once a year uh, and see the circus or twice a year, uh, they wanted to get out into the community and, and, and give back and show the community, you know, what circus could do uh, for all the people here. Right. So one of the earliest programs that they started was a program called Laughter Unlimited. 
Uh, and this program went out into the community, uh, into hospitals.